Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. And I got a little experimentation going on tonight. I've uh, been looking at some different things that I can engrave, try to come up with uh, different items that I can put out there, more custom. Like I said, I try to stay away from the things that everybody else does. And uh, it's fixing to be spring, got springs right around the corner. Christmas is kind of all of my designs and all my things that I've done for Christmas. I pretty much, those are out there. Uh, wrapping up on those for for now so I'm trying to come up with some ideas for springtime because that's right around the corner It'll be here before you know it so I've got to perfect some designs and get everything worked out and get all my my notes taken and everything so I'm gonna show you a project that I've come up with today that's fairly cheap uh, haven't seen a whole lot of market out there as far as uh, items being provided but the uh, the, the things that you need to be able to do this are pretty common and relatively inexpensive. So it might be a good, uh, good thing to sell wherever you are in your area and it might could benefit you. So stay around and I'm gonna move over to the machine and show you what I'm working. All right guys, here is my setup. It took a little, uh, a little doing because these little guys, these are uh, clay or terracotta pots that uh, I was walking around uh, Walmart and saw and I had to pick these guys up. Now, when you first start to engrave these things, if you're going to plan on doing one, I, I strongly recommend grab a couple because in some of my other videos, I told you that you're going to tear some things up to try to figure out how this works. And uh, that's exactly why I got two of them. This was my, my first test cup. And the, the way this thing is set up on the rotary and all that, you can see that there's a series of circles that some of them are really thin, some of them are really wide. And then there's that one where I finally got it dialed in on the rotary settings I needed to use. And then I went around to this side and kind of confirmed that I had it making circles. So I also had to engineer myself a little roller wheel right here. And the way I did that was I measured the, the widest point of the, the, the pot, which is this end, and also measured the narrowest end of the pot. But I moved it up just a little to get me away from the edge. And then I used a little bit of uh, blue tape. And guys, if you're doing laser engraving, you don't have a roll of that blue tape around, uh, you're, you're missing out on some uh, very useful material. So get you some painter's tape. And so I made me a little wheel, just slid that up on there and secured it, you know, just temporarily with a little bit of blue painter's tape just to make sure in the process it doesn't just fall off, hopefully. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I, I, I played around with the other one to try to figure out what the settings needed to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna write me some text right here on the top of this one. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do that, guys, is I've got my machine set to uh, current position on my starting point. Uh, I've also got my little green dot in the center of my engrave. So that means that wherever the crosshairs, wherever I point these crosshairs right here is where the center of my engrave is going to be. So I'm going to put some text on there. Uh, just something that I, I think might, uh, might look good and just to demonstrate. So I'm just going to put on there, uh, let's say, Let's just say for this one, we will do what's a good herb because uh, that, that's one thing I'm familiar with as far as people growing small things like that. So we'll just uh, we'll just say this one's going to be parsley. So this would be something like somebody that had like an indoor, uh, you know, little little herb garden or maybe even an outdoor one. Uh, these little pots would be handy for that. I'm going to find me a. Uh, kind of a spring looking font here if I can and we're gonna go with that to see how that looks all right now the way the rotary is set up you will have to uh, rotate your text 90 degrees to make sure that it is burned properly on that little edge right there I'm gonna be running this at 30 speed at 100 percent power uh, I did a burn a little while ago and I like the results I got from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run it at that power settings. So I'm gonna go ahead. It's gonna give me my warning for out of bounds because I am using current position. And I'm gonna start that guy. 
but I was a little, uh, like I said, I, I researched it. I looked for videos on it, and there were some older videos where people were doing it with uh, CO2 machines, and they were clamping them down and engraving them. But I really couldn't find any with the diodes uh, using a rotary that were recent videos. So I felt like that was a uh, that was some content that that would work, and uh, so we'll see how this turns out. If I didn't make my font too big, <laughs> that <laughs> that. That may be the case. I think I, I think I got it sized appropriately, but I may have made it a little big. I will tell you with these terracotta pots though, make sure you wear your glasses because you can definitely see the, the flashback off of it. So I'm gonna let that guy run for a few minutes and check back. All right guys, so that worked. Uh, here's what the burn looks like afterwards. Uh, there's my text and you can feel that it actually engraves it down into the material. Uh, I mean, it's not just a stain. It's discoloring the clay, but it is also removing a little bit of material because there is a, a slight recess or raised effect. It might actually be a raised effect. My, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say for sure. But either way, it's on there. Uh, but there's the there's the text and uh, I'm also going to do a graphic on the lower half down here so I'm going to put this back in here and I'm going to try I, I would normally would not have moved it but since we're doing a video I wanted to show you guys what it looked like before I did the second graphic uh, so I'm going to get my my little cup my little pot back in there I'm going to go right down below where I put that and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of get an idea of how much room I have here. Uh, so I'm going to say 40, 40 millimeters. I'm going to put me a 40 millimeter image in the center of that bottom half. Uh, now, the, the, the pot does have a little bit of a downward direction to it, but I'm thinking that that shouldn't be a big enough issue to hurt anything. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see how it turns out. All right, guys, it appears that it went well. Uh, I was a little worried that something was going to move with my little engineered uh, adapter, but apparently I did a pretty good job of that. Uh, I've got no, no, no lines or anything out of place, so I'm going to call that success. All right, guys, when it was all said and done, uh, there is the final product. It's got a, it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good detail to it. Uh, looks pretty, looks pretty nice. So there's you a, a product for this spring, guys. Uh, like I said, uh, the way that this stuff goes is if you're not the first one in your area to put this stuff out, then you're, you're going to lose uh, the opportunity to be the first one offering these things. So this is going on my Facebook page, and people will be thinking about this stuff in spring, and, and as they're starting to already, probably some of them are starting to prepare how they're going to redo their their herb gardens or their their little windowsill plants you know because like my daughter she likes to start her herbs out inside she'll put them in a little pot put them in the windowsill uh before it's even time to be planting them and then once the season kind of gets kicked off then all of her little baby parsley and her little baby oregano and all of that goes outside and goes into the raised uh, box that we've built her uh, and then it, it gets to grow up and mature outside so I think she's gonna like these and I'll probably end up doing more of them for her, but I also think I'm gonna be able to sell some of these guys. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pose this thing in the window seal where it's nice and you know, kind of go ahead and plant that idea of what these are to be used for and see how many orders start rolling in before springtime gets here. So one more idea for you guys. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and get ahead of the, uh, ahead of the rush, there it is right there. It's a uh, springtime activity it doesn't wipe off it's not i mean it, it it's not streaking there's no burn there's no soot uh it is actually discoloring and it looks like it may even be crystallizing the outer layer of the material let me see if i can get that in there where you can see it like really really well come on work with me there sony but there's the detail you know i got i did pretty good on my text size I got it right as big as big as I could without coming off the off of the flat spot. So 
<clears throat> but with with the X tool, this is about as big a pot as I can do with my X tool rotary. But luckily, guys, I have gotten myself prepared for doing larger items. And this is my Diwali rotary. And as you can see, uh, it is substantially larger and has a lot more room so I can do even bigger pots. I just, until I knew if I could mark them, I stuck with the little guys uh, as a cost saving measure. That, because, you know, I, and, and always guys, if you buy two or three of these things and you use one as a test cup, hang on to it. That way next time you set up and you go to do one of these, you can uh, go ahead and run a couple little small test burns. If nothing else, just do a 20 by 20 circle and then measure it with your mic and confirm that it is a 20 by 20 circle before you put the one that you're planning on selling on there uh, and that avoids having multiple uh, pots or whatever the item may be destroyed. Uh, that's always a good idea is to go ahead and just calibrate your machine and make sure that your settings are correct before you put a new piece on there. So I hope this helps you guys get ready for spring and uh, try to go ahead and plan what you're gonna be selling come springtime because uh, if you're not the first one with it out, with it out there, then uh, you're gonna miss the rush. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope this helps. Uh, if you got any more comments, concerns, or uh, anything else that you'd like to see on the channel, feel free to drop that below. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, as always, be safe and have a good day.